Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Tim from Tim's PC and I build custom PCs to suit anyone's needs or budget. I also live stream my builds and repairs for transparency and educational purposes. So if you'd like to get an awesome new PC and you'd like to see it put together live, send me a message today. All right, so back here tonight. So I haven't haven't done a stream for a little while, but like I said, that's because we're no longer running ads and stuff like that because not getting the return. So that means sales will go down. The number of PCs we build will go down. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I'm not going to keep putting money into advertising that's. Um, that's just not working and it's not that I'm not getting messages it's just that the the market has sort of changed people people don't have as much money in their pockets and everyone's trying to find the cheapest possible option that they can and because what we do here is is a little bit more engaging and it's it's not just simply putting the PC together on a production line um, it's a live stream. It's something that the the end user can be a part of. They can ask questions. They can see everything getting put together. So you know, it does. I've I've never I've never ever said to people that I'm like the cheapest person in the market because there are people who are you know doing pre-built PCs and and they they go and build like 30 of them at a time and stuff like that. They got like a you know, mini little warehouse going on, assembling them all and stuff like that, and they sell them on eBay and shit. And that's not that's not what we do here. So um, we generally try to do um, more higher end PCs for because um, you know if you're going to spend a little, if you're going to spend decent money on it, you may as well um, you may as well get to know the the technology and the system that you're buying a little bit more intimately when you're buying a PC for, you know, like five grand or something like that, um, paying a little bit extra, like a hundred dollars or so extra, um, to have your PC built and live streamed here, that's, that's worth, that's worthwhile for a lot of people. So, um, the problem is when everyone's looking for PCs between like $800 and two grand, um, charging that extra hundred dollars, just people are just they don't want it they want they want that they want that extra hundred dollars in their pocket so that's why you're not seeing as much of me i haven't quit um i just it's just um it's just i'm not going to be building as many pcs so yeah happy days um yeah i'll <laughs> i've got a lot of spare time on my hands so i've been freaking fixing up the place and stuff like that but i've got to go Gotta go get myself some other kind of work here to keep the keep the moolah flowing, you know? I can't I can't just can't just be not getting paid forever. <laughs> okay, well tonight we're gonna be building an editing and music production system if I remember right. This customer's been talking to me for ages about this build, so when I first when I first quoted the customer, it was with an i9 12900k however i couldn't get the 12900k but instead it's been superseded because that's um 12900k is 12th gen intel and it's been well and truly superseded now by the 14th gen i7 and this was at the same price so the customer got a, a free upgrade there on that one and so comparing the 12900k and the the 14700k 12900k is a 16 core 24 thread cpu this is a 20 core 28 thread cpu so it's it's a decent it's a decent chunk it's like a 25 percent more cores essentially um similar thread count but that's just due to the um the p core and e core configuration of the chip which we can look at later if someone wants to remind me about that because it's the kind of nerdy shit that, that I'm well aware of that I just don't think of um, explaining to people. Anyway, let's get stuck into the build. So there's the aforementioned 14700KF. We've got a Gigabyte B760M Gaming XAX motherboard. Just got a GTX 1650 card like I said, this isn't a gaming PC, so it 
it doesn't need much it just needs a, um, a display output we've got a 64 gigabyte kit of Corsair Vengeance so just DDR4 um, no need if you're doing video music photo editing any of that kind of stuff um, you're not going to see any big performance gain with DDR5 so my advice to people who are doing that don't even bother um, I know I know people who are running their businesses on old systems DDR3 running 64 and 128 gigabytes of RAM and because they're only working with photos and stuff like that um, they're, they're completely fine, they don't even really need an upgrade, we're just waiting for their PCs to completely give up the ghost. And because we don't have a massive graphics card chewing up all the juice, we just got a 650 watt power supply there, got a 1 terabyte NVMe SSD, the customers got some extra storage drives that they're going to be adding, so I'll, I'll ask the customer if I'll find out if they need me to install extra cabling and stuff like that for extra SATA drives or hard drives or something like that. Um, if the customers, I, I don't know, I don't know the customer's actual name. He's got a screen name, and and it's maybe you should have asked. Maybe I should. Maybe I should have asked because his his screen name, his screen, his screen, uh, his screen name is Mad Dog Simmons. And I don't feel right calling someone I don't know Matt Dog. <laughs> if I if I knew you, if I knew you personally, uh, I'd be like, yeah, Mad Dog, yeah, he's a legend, kind of thing. But I don't, I don't know you, so it, it feels well, weird. Well, he's buying a PC he, from you, then he kind of is a legend. He is a legend, yeah, of course. Everyone who buys a PC from me is an absolute legend. <laughs> um, but yeah. Anyway. It, he, no, he's just responded to me. It's Jake. Oh, okay, cool. Jake okay. Simmons. All right, so Jake, this is this is Jake's PC here. So <laughs> I'll get I'll get Jake to let me know what sort of extra drives he wants me to install. Um, if oh, well, like ones that you'll install on your end. If you need cables and stuff hooked up, I can do that. So you can just sort of plug in your drives and and whatever. Um, if they're NVMe. You've got multiple NVMe slots on that motherboard, so um, what do you say? I just asked the customer then, asked Jake what drives he's got because if he's got SATA drives in there, I'll install all the SATA cabling and I'll put the, the power cables in place so it's just nice and easy for him on his end to, to move over his other drives. Um, but yeah, we, we, can, we can cross that road. Because we've got a Leon Lee D11 case here if you haven't, if you haven't seen. So our our main drive bays are at the back here, so they're relatively easy to access. We just got these little trays here. The hard thing is is just getting all the all the cables in place. But what I can do is I can I can have all the cables down the other end there, and then you can just pull them out a little bit further, plug them into your drives, bolt them in, and that'll be that. And they can just sit there at the back and it's easy to swap them out if you ever need to. If you've got to take them somewhere and run them on another system or whatever, it's a little bit more plug and play with this case. Yeah. Hey man, how you going? And gaming. Nah, this is this PC won't be doing too much too much gaming. The only thing I haven't talked about is our cooler here. So we've got a deep cool LS720 cooler. These are, these are great new coolers, they're, they're good value, they've got a five year warranty, um, the, the, the fans on them are decent quality as well, um, and they're really, really easy to hook up because they don't have, um, they're daisy chainable fans, so they hook right into each other, sort of like a, um, 
sort of like a Leon Lee uni fan, how they just like slot together, only there's a very short cable that you plug in. Kind of like the NZXT ones. Um, so that makes it really easy and we've got another six of the same fans so technically we can we can hook all these up in in just two groups we can use um the one the one um controller kit from one pack of these fans and we'll have one spare and we'll have these ones separate as well because essentially these fans here that are on the cooler, they're the CPU fans. So it's generally advantageous to have them um, spinning on a different profile than the others. But yeah, like I said, it's not it's not a huge deal. You can hook them up however you want. You could potentially chain all nine fans plus the plus the block into the same connection if you wanted to do that. But yeah, I think we'll I think we'll run with two separate ones here. Maybe we'll do all the RGB together, but we'll have the the fans running in two separate groups. I think that will be the the best way of doing it. All right. Well, look, let's get stuck right into it. Some people, yeah, Jake was like, oh no, is it meant to be an i9? I was like, oh no, well, it was, it was meant to, but it was, it was out of stock at the, at the supplier, so I changed it to this one, but I mean, anyway, it's, it's a better, it's a better deal for you. Um, unfortunately, people just, people just, they, they hear the, they hear the, um, the retail branding and they get really like caught up on the on the numbers and stuff like that and it's like yeah look you know you can only use the the numbers like the the i5 the i7 the i9 the ryzen 5 7 and 9 you can really only use those numbers to compare cpus of the um in the same generation because as soon as you move to the next generation You'll have a situation where you, where the i5s in the new generation beat the i7s in the previous generation, and, and it all starts to get a little bit messy, um, because they are just they are just like retail. That's just retail branding, so the average person can sort of differentiate between the the um you know the the different levels of, of the chip. But when you're trying to compare. CPUs across different generations. You gotta kind of, you gotta kind of throw the throw the um, retail branding out because it's not necessarily the most accurate um, way of doing it. Like, you know, it's like uh, like I've said to uh, sometimes sometimes I remember one person. I'll tell you about this one customer, right? I didn't sell a PC to this customer because well, you'll see you'll see why. Um, so. He asked me for a quote, and he's like, oh, "I've got a, I want a budget gaming PC, um, blah blah blah. I've got eleven hundred dollars to spend max, blah 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 blah." This was a few years ago, and I put together a quote for him with, it was probably like a tenth gen Intel i3, but we still had a sixteen fifty for our graphics card, and he, I think I quoted him like brand 1050 something around that um and and he he replied he was like really really snarky he goes you're trying to rip me off i've just been over on ebay and i can get an i7 for 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 700 dollars and and i'm like but it's not new he's like yes it is and he showed me a link and i'm like that's a fourth gen i7 you know, um, my my tenth gen i three runs laps around that, but he didn't want to hear it because he was caught up on that on that number, and so he would have gone and bought himself a ten year old um, a ten year old PC that he would have thought was new that would have had less performance 
than the system that I was offering to him. But that's just because he he got too caught up on that um, on that branding, which only makes it's only it's only relevant when you're comparing to the other fourth gen Intel chips, because outside of that, it, yeah, it doesn't really mean much. Anyway, that's enough of a rant here. This is our this is our motherboard. What's up? Hey Darren, how you going? Good to have you with us. Who's that? He says he's doing okay. He's got a day off. Oh, that's nice, mate. Day off is always good. Okay, anyway, we we're going to have a look at the motherboard. So, pretty decent little motherboard. We got eight pins of CPU power. So that's plenty of juice for your CPU. The boards that have the, you know, the 12 and the and the 16. It's it's just a bit of flex, right? Um, 250 watts max can be put out of that of that socket there, so you're never really gonna end up drawing that much power from over, over your CPU unless you overclock. So unless you're an overclocker, you really don't really need too much more than that. We've got nice direct touch heat sinks here on our MOSFET BRM co-processors. We have one two, three, and a sneaky fourth up the top here, so four fan headers, so just be aware of that. We got 24 pins of um, motherboard power there, we got USB-C, we got a USB-3, some SATA ports there, so if, um, two on the side, two on the bottom there. We've got our front panel connectors there, where we got there, our other SATAs. USB 2, um, Thunderbolt headers, TPM header, we've got a total of um, 4 RGB headers, that's 2 5 volt, 2 12 volt, and we've got a COM port, front panel audio, 2 M2 slots, and the bottom slot here is a PCIe X4 slot there. So. Two M2 slots and the PCI X4 at the bottom, and our X16 there for our graphics card up top. And then around the back here, we've got our 2.5 gigabit LAN. We've got a total of eight USB ports. We're not using either of these display outputs, so don't plug any monitors in there. They won't they won't do anything. But our Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1 there. So good little motherboard. And you don't need, you don't really need to spend too much more than this if you're just an ordinary user. You're not like trying to break any freaking motherboard world records or anything like that. Okay, so 14700KF here, 14th Gen Intel. See, I remember. I remember when the first the first gen of Intel Intel Core came out. I was there fucking three thousand. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, that's a long time ago now. It doesn't feel like that long, but it it, it is a fucking long time. Okay. So new CPU here. We'll have a look at that when we um, when we get everything installed. We got a one terabyte NVMe, five year warranty. But even if it's got a five year warranty, okay, you need to back up your stuff, okay. Very important for everyone to back up their stuff had been been getting a few older and less tech savvy customers just like walk-ins and stuff over the last last month and um, my advice to all of them was you know the only way to be completely sure and completely backed up in all situations is if you have an off-site and offline backup so all of your important stuff, there should be a copy of it that's not in your house. And ideally that's not connected to 
like any servers or any system that's plugged into the power or anything that could potentially cause a problem because you don't want you don't want to be in a situation where there's a um, there's a house fire and you feel compelled to not just get the fuck out of the house fire before you fucking die from the carbon monoxide um, and stuff you feel compelled to go in and rescue your computer right because it's got all your family photos on it or something like that the only way to be completely insured is to have some sort of a backup offline so in that situation you could be like ah oh, oh well um that, that's why we have insurance blah 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 um happy days you don't have to worry about oh fuck we've lost everything same for theft if someone breaks into your house and steals your computer they'll steal all of your drives as well and and that'll be it you won't get have any of your stuff back so all right so hopefully if you haven't haven't done it already you've gone and bought yourself a um external ssd or something like that and you're um you're gonna copy off all of the important stuff off your computer and then um, go and give it to a friend or relative and stuff like that then you are completely insured and completely backed up and completely immune to fire and theft see they're the last two things that you think about right you're just like oh I can I can I can have a backup and I can just like keep it somewhere in my house. No, 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 you can't. You don't understand. <laughs> in the moment when the the fucking smoke alarms going off and it's three o'clock in the morning and you you wake up in a in a daze, you, you're not going to be you're not going to be saving that other drive like guaranteed in the moment. Not, not only should you not do that, you should get the fuck out of your house if there's a fire. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, that's all right for a 990. Yeah, that's pretty good. Two terabyte. Two terabyte, yeah, that's really good actually. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, the 990, the 990, it's up there. The the current the, the current world record holder for SSD speed. The the crown's currently with crucial. So we'll wait and see we'll wait and see what Samsung has to say about that soon. So, so Crucial have the, have the T700, and that, that thing is bloody fast, like, what did we, I can't even remember what we got it up to, I think it was like, what, freaking, like, 15 gigabytes a second or something like that, like, really 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 insane speeds that was with the um that was with the uh, drive caching active so consider that and that was with uh ddr5 ram for the for the drive caching so, so yeah drive caching um basically without going into all the details it's um it's a way of making your SSD read and write faster, particularly over a smaller amount of data with the help of the RAM. So there's less of an advantage um, when it comes to transferring larger amounts of data, but there's an advantage when it comes to smaller amounts of data. So that's that's what it is. Um, crucial call it momentum cache. Um, 
and yeah, you can you can enable it. And if you've got the faster the RAM that you've got, sort of the the more effective it becomes. Higher speeds that you'll get, etc. But yeah, if you, if you look, if you're looking, if, if you want to look on the S, the the top, the, the speed tier list for SSDs, the Samsung 990 and the Crucial, um, the Crucial T700, um, they're your top ones, right? You can't get you can't get better than that. They are insanely fast. But the sad thing is, most most people never really get the get the advantage of of the of the speed of the SSD there. Because when it comes to like loading Windows and stuff like that, the the bottleneck isn't really the the read speed. There's there's other there's other things to do with the software that kind of slows it down. So beyond a certain point. There's not there's not as much of a return. That's why you can that's why you can see people still using SATA SSDs and it's you know their PCs are loading up still pretty fast. Like you know it might be a couple second a second or so slower, but you know considering it's like five times slower on a speed test and it's only you know a small percentage slower. You can kind of see where I'm going with that. Okay. So this is going to be in the case like this. And as we can see here, you've got these three short cables and they plug into each other. The RGB for the block also comes into that chain as well. And then on the other end is our controller, and this is all our controller is. So, on one end, we have a connection that is compatible there. So on one end of the chain, and then it's powered by SATA, and then the addressability Oh, where are we? The addressability is through these two. So these two go to the motherboard. That goes to the power. And then this one here controls this chain of devices. We've also got an extension cable here as well if we need it. Alright, so that's all that's all prepped. Oh hang on. No no it's not. We haven't put the arms on our block here. So we've got pre-applied thermal compound there, so no need for any extra. So with the Intel arms there, it's not really much to think about. They are symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter which way you put them on. The AMD ones are not symmetrical, so you've got to consider which way you want to want to mount it. Alright. 
and then once we got our arms on, we can install our back plate there. So it just slots on like that. And then we've got these little, little offset pieces. These just stop you from over tightening the, um, the bolts there. That's a legitimate concern. Yeah. Hey George, how you going? Good to have you with us. Yay. For a change, how was that? So even though you got the you got the little plastic offsets in there, still don't screw it down super super tight. So start on one corner, do the opposite one. two opposite ones. And try to just grip your screwdriver with the same amount of grip and rotate it and eventually you'll sort of lose traction on the bolt. And that's really as close as you have to do it. You don't have to get the torque wrench out or anything like that. Um, it's completely fine as long as it's nice even mounting pressure because we've got a flat block with thermal compound so if it's held as flat and as close as possible to the lid of the CPU, we'll have optimal performance there. Okay, so our board and our cooler is all prepped and ready to go. So, let's turn our attention to the case. So we've got a D11 here. What's interesting about a D11, like I've explained to a few people with different cases, is you have this glass panel on the front, right? So that's pretty weird. Like that's normally where the 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 freaking cool air comes in. Um, you got this bit on the side there. There's no room for a fan at the back there. What's going on there? I'm going to get rid of these quickly. Ah, yes, the D11. Alright, so if you look at these and you feel it's a little bit weird looking and stuff like that, let me sort of let me sort of solve all your problems. This is how a traditional PC is kind of laid out, only it doesn't have so much room at the back there. You'd have three fans on the front there blowing cool air into the chassis. But in this case, this fits the bottom. So in terms of the airflow orientation, these three fans on the bottom are kind of like the you know, these ones here are one, some of the most important fans in the case. These three on the wall, they're kind of, they're kind of just for show, right? Like, they just look, they just look cool. They don't really move a great deal of air because the primary airflow is from these three on the bottom pushing cool air in and they push cool air in directly on top of your graphics card. 
So if you've got a gaming PC, that's awesome. Cool air from outside the case being blown directly onto your graphics card. Perfect. And then up top, that's where we mount our radiator. So we've got three fans on the radiator there. Um, so the flow is a little bit constricted from these three fans compared to these three on the bottom. But then these fans on the wall here will have them in exhaust as well. So that's kind of the airflow dynamics here of the case. Um, so we're drawing in, we're drawing in cool air here, and then we're pushing it out at the back and at the top. And this little vent here um, will generally be drawing in a, a little bit of extra air um, from the top and the side, essentially, because they're in the exhaust position. So that's that's the airflow dynamics that we that we work with with the the D11s. And so, oh, what's on your back? around the back here, so we got plenty of room to hide all of your cables away. And so, when I do cable management, I don't do five million cable ties or anything like that because the problem is as soon as you need to do something with it it becomes a massive pain in the ass to cut everything out because of a faulty fan or something like that so what we do is we tie things up in groups so for example the fans we have all of the fan cables grouped together and we tie them down together into a, into a bunch and then it'll be tucked away. Now. That's the way to do it. Then you've got one cable tie for all of your fans. You cut that out and you can replace that faulty fan. One tie back goes back. That's why they give you all this room at the back of, of PC cases these days. It's designed so it can be built and built efficiently without remember like remember back in the day if you've been in the PC community for a while remember when they used to give you like I don't know like 0.8 of a centimeter of freaking space on the back panel and you had to like spend all this time like flattening out freaking cables and stuff like that trying to get the the back panel on and stuff like that it was a real pain in the ass um, you don't have that problem with pretty much all cases these days. So, so we got USB C, we got USB three, got our front panels, we got front panel audio there as well. So, not a very complicated setup here from the front I/O. We don't have any USB two, so that's kind of good because your Corsair or um, Leon Lee controller will probably need USB two. Okay, so normally we'd start by putting in a power supply in the, into your case. It's normally a good place to start. However, with a D11, you don't want to actually do that. You want to start with getting all the fans in place, the motherboard, getting most things in place, and then the power supply sort of comes down over the top of everything else. Because you can have a lot of thick cables there from the power supply. Um, it's best to have all these thin cables sort of tucked away because it's relatively easy to remove the big cables and then yeah if you do it if, if you if you do it the other way around the power supply is in the way especially when you're trying to get cables through down here underneath where the power supply is but just in general having all this bunch of cables sticking out here makes it a lot harder to work through with all the other cables that we've got for the fans and everything like that because the one thing about a d11 case is they give you all of the all of the room all of the space all of the all of the stuff that you need to have it looking very very clean and tidy without seeing basically any cables at all so if you focus on that, my advice, get your motherboard and all of your other cable work done. Then you can put in the power supply, which sort of obstructs everything else. Then you can sort of plug everything in at the end. So you'll have plenty of room 
to mount your CPU radiator up the top there, you'll still have plenty of room to plug in your CPU power. So unlike some cases where you'd want to plug in all this stuff at the top here before you mount your radiator, you don't really have to worry about any of that with this case. So, all right, let's go and do it. So we got some of these, uh, these ones here. These are the same fans that are on our radiator there. Okay. And so the only thing to consider with your fans at the bottom there is they need to be they need to be in the upside down position so if you have them right way up and you have all the fans right way up then all of the fans are going to be pushing air out and you'll you'll end up you'll end up with this kind of like negative pressure where only where like you're not really you're not really drawing you're not really drawing air in you're just pu trying to push it out and so air's not really flowing too well through the case because you really want you know volume of air in to equal the volume being pushed out that's why i talk about these three on the bottom and three on the top as the two main drivers of the airflow and these three these ones on the side the three on the side are like the auxiliaries um, you can just hang out back there. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just lining these fans up here. Sorry, don't mind me while I can get everything organized over here. Okay, so I heard something about Corsair's new fan bolts. They they bolt on with one screw. like one rotation. Yeah, I saw that the other day. Article on the train. Mm -hmm. okay, let's see. It does sound pretty fancy, making it easy to just do it by hand without using power tools and shit like that. Because, yeah, seriously, you got to be so careful with electric screwdrivers and fan bolts and PCs. Mm -hmm. It's just, you fuck up one time and then you spend bloody hours on it. That's why I always just suck it up and do it by hand. I'm doing lots of stuff like that.
doing earthworks in areas that it's kind of hard to get machines. So yeah, that's always fun. It's like being on the chain gang. So yeah, these three on the bottom, basically it's just the same as the three fans on the front of your PC case if you've got a more traditional looking PC case. So if you do want to do a D11, these fans here I'm doing on the bottom, these are not optional, okay? These are very much not optional. They are very, very much a requirement. It's like whenever I see someone, whenever I get someone who messages me, it's like, oh, I got a Leon Lee D11, but I hate it. The airflow is terrible. I'm just like, ah, oh, okay, you, you haven't, you've obviously not built it right. Then. So I'm very familiar with this case, and yeah, believe me, it doesn't have. There's no problems with airflow. The problem is you. Not necessarily, not necessarily. I mean, sometimes they buy a PC and that's how they bought it without the freaking fans installed correctly. Because yeah, th you've really got to, with this case, you've really got to install all nine fans or 10 fans for the, um, for the XL and the Evo. You really got to install all the fans, okay? If, you, if you're not prepared to buy all the fans for it, don't buy a Leon Lee D11 or similar cases that have like a solid piece at the front there and it's designed to have, you know, three fans on the bottom, three fans on the top, etc. Unless you want to actually do that. Okay, so I'm just sort of bending the, the copper and the wire down a little bit along here, just so any traces of the cable stays out of sight. And yes, FYI, you can bend the cables, it's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. People get a little bit precious with technology. You know, there's certainly some very delicate technology out here. However, in general, it's not consumer PCs. They, compared to what they used to be, oh man, have they simplified the shit out of it. Absolutely. Like, go back, go back into like the 90s when I first started tinkering with PCs and shit like that. I was a kid. And um, yeah, it was a lot, a lot more complicated. I, I, um, the first thing I, the first thing I ever did was the PC that I had I got a PC for, for my birthday. The only thing was it didn't have a um, it didn't have a sound card and the, the motherboard um, the motherboard didn't have sound either. So I needed to install a discrete sound card to to make it work. And like there's like an array of pins and you gotta like move the little jumper to different pins and it's a bright pain in the ass. But it was good because I felt I got a massive dopamine rush as a kid when I finally worked out um, exactly how to install it. It was it was technical. 
but I worked it out. I read the instruction manual. <laughs> Okay. All right, then these fans here, these go on the side. All right. Okay. I think I'll I think I'll do three separate groups. I've got enough fan headers on the board. We can make that happen. That way you can control each group of three independently. That's uh,
So yeah, this is probably the boringest part, is just screwing fans in. At least it's not a Corsair 1000D. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just, just do a quick Google search. It's a little bit stupid. It's like the Texas of, of PC cases, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Alright, so these two cables control both groups of three fans that we've got there. Has that been witnessed before? Is that a described condition or what, what the hell is the deal with that? A dog born with six legs and two hips. Mm -hmm. It had other like, defects as well. What, like, there are, there are various birth defects in humans that are like described, they have a name and stuff. That's what I wanted to know. If, if, it has, Did this have it a also name? has one kidney. One kid. It's got two hips, but one kidney. Yeah. Oh, damn, that's. Don't you, don't you feel ripped off if you had like, <laughs> you had two lots of hips, but only only one kidney. You expect twice as many kidneys, right? Right. I'm I'm sorry, but I I, I would feel ripped off. <laughs> Very much so, very ripped off. It survived the surgery, so we'll see what goes, I guess. I reckon it's got something to do with someone inbreeding animals. Yeah, and quite then freaking out when they <laughs> when their dog gives birth to this fucking six leg dog. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Colin. How you going? Cohen. Cohen. Sorry. Cohen. Sorry. Sorry. I got my head in a PC case. It sounds different. That's my excuse. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> it's not because I've got ears full of fucking wax or anything like that. No, not at all. Okay. Alright, 
So those cables there, hooked away and looking alright. So this cable here at the top, that's the RGB for the block there. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug it in to our radiator chain. And then on the other end, extension cable. Alrighty, and then, I mean it's got 12 bolt holes on it, you don't really need all 12, so if you are installing a radiator in a different case and it's like a hole covered up by, by metal and you just can't get it in the right position and you can only freaking screw in like I don't know, 6 out of 8 bolts or 8 out of 12 bolts or something like that, don't worry about it. The reason why there's 12 bolt holes on a 360mm radiator is because of the, um, the fans. If you want to mount three fans on it you'd have to have four screws for each fan that's why there's 12 holes not because you need 12 bolts to actually mount the radiator all right so i'm just going to put a few in for now so i can do the rest of them later on okay so that's all looking good. Alright. So hopefully we don't run out of side ports. If not. can run each group on their own controller. So each group of three fans can be controlled independently. How cool is that? There we go. See that's not that's not too scary, right? Okay, so we've got the RGB, so... We'll probably... I mean, we can just chain in the RGB together, that'll probably look cleaner.
Chiudete. So we've got the RGB for the, the two bottom groups of three. They're all connected together. And then we'll connect the pump and the top three on another header so you've got a bit more um, customization options with the fans. to remove I need to get at the back of the board Bailey no.
Jesus, she's like, we keep being annoyed. So I feel Okay. Okay, so it's looking pretty good around there. We can finally do our power supply. Okay. So the main thing I look for when suggesting a power supply to someone, I'm looking for nice black cables, not ketchup and mustard ones unless they're on a tight budget. You shouldn't really have to spend too much extra to uh, to get one that's got flat black cables. And then the other one, the other thing I really look for is the the warranty. And the other one I look for is is the failure rate, but that's not really something that matters to a consumer that's got to do with like out of a hundred how many are expected to fail okay so the efficiency rating so the 80 plus rating that is not a guide to quality so on the high end if you're looking at like an 80 plus platinum or titanium power supply you can't make cheap platinum power supplies so 
you buy any platinum power supply, it's going to be a top quality unit. But when it comes to gold, oh, there's some real cheap and nasty gold rated CPUs out there. Oh. So we've got all of those, all of those cable ties, and I should have said all of those cables, and we we'll put in a single cable tie, and that's for all of our fans and RGB there. So if anything goes wrong, we've just got that one cable tie there to cut out. Um, Look, I don't know. I don't know what drives are being installed here. So I'm just gonna put all of the spare SATA cables in one of the slots up there, and then got a couple of SATA cables here. Okay. So yeah. That piece is just what you dropped in to check the, you check out the world Tim. Doing a good job, mate. Always good to see how someone else builds a PC and what you're thinking is you could put it together. Yeah, well, thanks man. Appreciate that. Yeah, so I mean, I'm always like, if I build PCs to people, I'm generally the one who's going to be going to be fixing it. Or if I'm not fixing it, it's going to be the end user trying to muck around with it and fix it. So as a general rule, we try and reduce the amount of potential extra work that we're going to have to do. And plus, the other thing, the other thing as well about using lots of cable ties is every time you cut one out, you're at risk of a bit of human error and cutting a cable. So you don't want to, you don't want to put yourself, especially if you're running a business, you don't want to put yourself in a position <laughs> where, um, yeah, where you um, end up having to freaking spend extra time repairing fans or replacing fans on your budget and stuff like that. You don't want any of that.
Okay. So that's looking pretty good. And like I said here, we're we're just um we've just got a GTX 1650 in this because it's actually it's actually a um, editing slash production machine. 64 gigabytes of RAM, extra storage drives being added. But yeah, not not really not really for gaming, so it's replacing a, an older an older system, an older lower spec DDR3 system, if I'm not mistaken. It's like 10 plus years old and, you know, realistically he needs a, um, needs a new rig. He wants it to look good and perform well and not have to worry about buying a new one anytime soon. But yeah, of course you can upgrade the graphics card there. Um, you can run a fair bit more on the power supply that you've got. You could run like a 3060 or 4060 in here if you wanted to. But yeah, like I said, it's it's not it's not exactly a requirement if I remember right. Well, I'd say it's not because I obviously would have discussed it with the, the customer before I chose a um, GTX 1650. Mm -hmm. so And then we just put one final tie around that. Aha! It's like, where did I put this? So yeah, with, with your with your D11s, just make sure that you get all your other cables in place. Then the power cables can go on on top, and then you shouldn't have any problems packing everything away nice and neatly, grouped away with what it is behind that panel there. And then around the front here. It's nice and clean. We don't have lots of cables sticking out there at the bottom or anything like that. Um, we don't have random cables sticking out through here or anything like that. We've run the cables behind the board where possible um, just, to, just to kind of um, improve the aesthetic. 
the only thing we haven't done is put a couple of extra bolts in the board. And I'll do that before I forget. Because, oh man, will I get in trouble if I ship this without putting all the bolts in it? It's happened before. Let's try to make it sure it doesn't happen again. Okay, so there she's at. We've got all of our cables there for our drives tucked up in there. Everything's all connected. Now we can see whether it actually works. We got a 14th gen i7 here, so let's hope let's hope our motherboard doesn't need a freaking BIOS update or anything like that. I mean, it's a B, it's a B760, so I mean it should be okay but hey I've seen I've seen weirder shit See lighting on the fans if it posts. Take usually about 20 seconds or so the first time you turn it on. So what did we, what version did we have on here? F12. This is F9. What? B760 Gaming X AX DDR4. Mm -hmm. F9. So why do I have F12 up here? That's not, for some reason, that's not the right one. We, we did the revision though, didn't we? Yeah. Revision 1.3? Yeah, I, I, I checked it. It didn't. It didn't like it. Mm. It's weird. It's very weird. Oh well, that's all right. Do you want me to do the one before it? Then? No, 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 no. It's all right. Okay, no, that's that's. that's 
because it has F12 on it and I tried to even update it to that one it didn't even work so what's with the other what's in the other revisions That's so weird. Oh, hang on. This is, it doesn't say it on the box, like on the front there, but this is the B650MGXAX. Oh, well there you go, that's why. Yeah, like gaming. What? See, yeah. see, see. It says that on the front. See the G. Where the fuck did that come from? Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so that's, that's not even coming up. I'm confused. Have you done the M? B760M Gaming XAX. That's the only thing, that's the only thing I can think of. No, B760M. That'll be it, I guarantee. I, I reckon, I reckon we pretty, we can pretty confidently assume that that's that that'll be it because something wasn't right there show me like f14 or something <laughs> F sixteen, yay.
You share the screen, right? Yeah. Just checking. <laughs> okay. My R key. No, there it is. My R key was stuck. some icons down here to keep everything organized um, I'll put a games folder there just in case anything changes oh. So this is mainly software that I use for um, testing the PC, make sure everything's running right.
Okay. So I'm pretty sure this is going to Melbourne. Cinebench is used for the stress test. So yeah, you can game on a 1650, it's just not what the average person wanting to play Call of Duty Warzone or Fortnite really wants to use but if you're a fan of like retro games and I'm a, I love retro games it'll absolutely tear up anything that's over 10 years old and some games that are new that just aren't very demanding Alright, so there's our 28 core, or 28 thread I should say, CPU. So over here, go into computer management, just double check and make sure all your devices are installed. Um, you'll still see some asterisks there until you have your chipset driver and other motherboard drivers installed. So over here, that is our uh, 
basically run away. Intel management engine software. Okay, so it won't take too long from this point on. We'll see these devices here slowly disappear. Alrighty, so there's our CPU. We've got our 20 cores and 28 threads. Here's the ME software. Oh, there we go. So there's another couple of devices there. Play that COM port header and a couple of others. Not that we're really going to need a COM port header, I don't think.
Okay, so all of our devices in computer management, device manager, are installed. Even XTU is installing for me. How good is that? Check that out. It's like a freaking disco. Thank you. 
bug fly out my nose. <laughs> Alright, so this BIOS is just from last month, so relatively recent. We're all at that age, we're all at that age now where you can kind of just shave your head if you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, nah, you'll love it, man. And so yeah, it's all good, so I'll get it I'll get it packed up and and shipped for you tomorrow. So hopefully you'll get it by Friday. Small dog, yeah. Small dog.
sitting at my feet. Okay. <laughs> Awesome, man. Yeah, no, D11 is an excellent case. Um, it's just the fact that it's so big. Yeah, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass, but it's a nice little case. You don't have to worry about any of the airflow issues. If anyone says anything about it, yeah, no, you don't have to worry about that. It's, it's scanning and repairing my little BIOS drive. <laughs> what does it need to repair on that? I don't know. This has nothing to do with your computer. This is my little USB drive. Whenever you're ready. Okay. So yeah, Jake, just let me know if you if you want if you want to stay on Windows 10 or if you want Windows 11. Just let me know. Um, it's a free upgrade from Windows 10 to 11, so I just Jake. apply it if if you want it. Oh, Jake, so I did that to me the other day on my Samsung portable SSD before I swiped it too. Oh no! D didn't like yours. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. So it's a lot of shit to have to. Damn, um, do you, do you have this app, Crystal Disk Info? Because it'll, it'll tell you stuff about your SSD, and you don't even have to understand any of this stuff below, you can just look up here at the health status. Although, this is my... NVMe in an enclosure and it says 100% here but I mean I don't think I don't think it's actually 100% I think something's getting lost in translation through the um, through the enclosure there because this has been this has been used plenty of times as you can see But yeah, you can have a look in here and it won't show you, like, it shows you failures that are caused from, like, the drive wearing out. Um, there are certain failures that can occur, um, and the drive will say 100% in Crystal Disk Info the last time you checked it, and then all of a sudden it just dies on you. <laughs> and that can happen, it's got nothing to do with anything listed here. Yeah. He says, I have you know, a bunch of audio samples and lost and I'm savvy enough to know that there's nothing to do with the computer build. Yeah, okay, okay. But I mean, you, you've got an older system there, so... Okay. So now that you've got a modern Intel K-series chip, 
whether it's 12th gen, 13th gen, 14th gen Intel, they're all LGA 1700 socket chips. So, yeah, pretty much the same thing. But with any of our um, 12th gen and above K series chips, um, they are out of the box tuned for gaming and to get the highest possible result on a benchmark test. So, something like CPU Z. And so, if we go up here, um, if we click on stress CPU, uh, it should go straight up to 100 degrees on the package temperature there out of the box. Oh, a little bit less. Oh no, there we go. 100 C. There we go. And that's, that's how these chips are tuned out of the box. This isn't an issue with the cooler or the CPU or anything. So we're going to tune, we're going to tune the, the chip so it runs at a, at a cooler temperature under load. Um, so this will be like a profile um, that we'll use for doing video, photo, editing, audio production, anything like that. Um, it, it's... You still get all the cores and you still get all the threads, it's just not freaking pre-overclocked to win on benchmarks. Okay. Yes, yep. Windows 10 is fine unless you reckon 11's generally what I recommend to people these days um, unless you're running something that specifically doesn't work properly on Windows 11 just because Windows 11 um, it is it's the future they've um, they're they're no longer releasing feature updates for Windows 10 however though Windows 11 is the focus so there's feature updates coming from that. So feature updates are major updates to the Windows software where they add new features, modify existing features, etc. They're the big updates where you might actually physically notice something different with Windows. Um, and so yeah, you've you've got them you've got them on Windows 11 whereas you don't on Windows 10. So as a general rule. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about, right? So we come over here and we have a look at the the results. Alright, so as you can see, in terms of single thread score, we are right up the top with Intel 14th gen. So that's what this 14 at the start of the model number needs. So you got a 14th gen here. Pretty much one gen per year. So you got the 13900K. This is the i9 13900K. Pretty much as good as the i7 from the 14th gen. And then down here you've got the the i9 12900K. This was the original one in your quote. And so yeah, a little bit little bit slower there. Uh, I don't know. We we'll call it 10% slower, so it's 10% faster on single core, so on a core by core basis. We go over here to, to multi-thread. So it's all in, this is, it's in a class of its own because it's 28 threads, but let's compare it to say some other 32 thread chips. So these are chips that have more, more threads and so as we can see here, we are sitting just behind the 13900K, the i9 from the last generation on a multi-core level. But we compare ourselves to 24-core, um, which is the i9-12900 chips. We can see that we're a decent chunk ahead of the 12th gen i9 on a multi-core basis. So yeah, that's that's what I was that's what I was saying about the the chips. This is this these chips here, 12, 
12th gen, so they're a couple of years old, so they're like going out of stock everywhere right now, so it was that one, or we like get the get the new generation one, which is more performance at the same price. So yes, all right. So before we before we get too far into it, I should have closed that. Okay, so before we do anything else, let's get these freaking temperatures under control, hey? Okay, so I'm going to come over here and we're going to set a wattage limit. So we're not going to touch any of the other settings, we're just going to tell it how much power it's allowed to run through itself. So I'm going to set it at exactly 170. Let's apply. So remember, we went straight to 100C when we hit stress with it doing its thing. So let's try 170 watts here to start us off with. There we go. Okay, so 70-ish 70 70 -ish degrees with the CPU-Z benchmark on it. CPU-Z, it stresses your CPU, but we can, we can, um, we can stress it a bit more. So this is Cinebench. Oh, still sitting at the, the similar level. Let's move it, let's move it up. Chuck an extra five watts on there. Alright. Yeah, getting, getting there. Let's just stop that for a second. Mm -hmm. Jake says you have more than one, please. This is sick. Then you do the icing for the wind. Yep. Alright, let's... Yeah, Windows 11 is alright. Yeah. It's, it I held off for a while, it is, I use it now it, as a streaming PC. It's it, it, is the, it is the future. It's never a good idea to jump over and start doing it straight away. Because, you know, you're, you're essentially the beta tester then. All right, 100 and, so 185 watts. That's a decent amount of wattage running through that chip. I reckon Alright, let's try Let's try 180. I'd like it to sort of hover around just under the 80C mark. Because, yeah, I mean, you don't want your freaking... You don't want your CPU fucking going nuts every time you um you put it to work with something okay 
Okay, so where are the profiles? We can save a profile in here. Um, we'll call this let's call it edited profile. Oh, it doesn't like spaces. Alright, so we'll call it edited. So, if you have a problem, if it's getting too hot for whatever you're doing, open up Extreme Tuning Utility, click on Profiles, and just click on the one that you want. Click on Show Values. So if we go to Default, you can click on Show Values, and it'll come up Apply. And now we're back to the default settings with no voltage limit, sorry, no um, wattage limit. We go down to edit it again, we can click on show values and click apply. And now we're back to the 180 watt limit there. So happy days, you've, you've got that, you've got that in your back pocket if you need it for whatever reason. And this is what we do for all of the um, all of the Intel K-series chips for 12th gen and onwards. We also do it for the i7s as well, the i7Ks. Um, we don't generally have to do it for the i5Ks, they're okay. And, and K for Intel K-series chips, that's the top of the line ones. They're the ones that are unlocked and able to overclock. Okay, oh, got a new interface here for BIOS, look at that, happy days, um, so what do I come in here for, oh we can turn on XMP, not that it's a big deal for, for editing or anything like that, um, can we go to advanced mode, yeah. Okay, so because we've got a CPU cooler, an all-in-one liquid cooler I should say, um, we want to turn our CPU header to full speed, um, those, the pump inside it, it doesn't do well with ramping up and down, up and down, up and down all the time, it, it causes them to wear out. It's kind of like, kind of like a car, like going up and down in revs all the time and going from hot to cold, hot to cold, hot to cold, that sort of destroys an engine over time. Same sort of thing with computers, same sort of thing with pumps in particular. So the pump on the all-in-one liquid cooler, if it just runs at a constant speed the whole time, it's happier than ramping up and down all the time. Okay. All right. So look, I'll run. At, I'll at least run Heaven on it, just for consistency's sake. And this is this is a gaming benchmark, but it's also a little bit of a. Um, 
little bit of a test for the whole system, give the graphics card a bit of a run before it gets sent off. And so all this stuff on the screen up the top is our graphics card, temperature, usage, clock speed, wattage. The mem in there in green is our VRAM on the card, usage and clock speed. Our CPU temperature, usage, clock speed, wattage, and our RAM usage. And this number here, that's how many frames per second it's currently running at. So like I said, you know, for older, older games and stuff like that, and games where the frame rate's not as important, this is fine. Small dog. error with their servers. Oh well. Oh 
Oh, if Microsoft servers are going to be silly, I'll um, I don't have to. I don't have to do the um, do any of these updates, or it looks like it's maybe going to work. So sometimes if Windows update doesn't work, if you can delete all the stuff from the software distribution folder and restart your computer, sometimes that will um, solve your issues with Windows updates. Because sometimes an update can become like corrupted and then it just kind of sits there causing problems and then you can't just delete it because you've got to close the Windows services that are using the, the files in that software distribution folder. Once you delete, once you close those Windows processes, then you can, then you can delete it. And theoretically with some problems, that'll, that'll solve everything because then you won't have any, any data to do with Windows update and you click on check for updates and it will get fresh stuff from the server. So it doesn't always fix it because sometimes the issue's on, on their end and that's why you've got a corrupted file and so the same corrupted problem will just download again. But if the issue was something on our end, we can sort that out. Other than that, that's pretty much the end of the night now. I think the problem's on their end though. But at least we've been double sure. Yep, problems on their end. Okay.
All right, so we'll do our we'll start our stress test, and then we'll sign off for the night. Oh, edit was already applied. Cool, cool. All right, so we'll start Fermark. Stressing out the graphics card. And then we'll start this one here in Cinebench. And so yeah, now we just log log our temperatures over here. So our CPU can go up to 100 degrees. And our graphics card there can get up to 83 degrees on the GPU and up to 100 on the hotspot. So we've got everything set up. We'll just let it all um, let it all do its thing. I just realised. I've got Corsair RAM in there, we might have to get the freaking Corsair software to be able to control it. Yeah, that probably be a good idea. Mm -hmm. MSI motherboards are good at overriding the Corsair software for RAM and then you don't need it. So that that's that's a, a eh, that's advantageous sometimes I guess. But yeah, now that we've now that we've made adjustments to it, it's going to run like a dream. It's going to sit there in the high 70s, early 80s there under load, um, which is where we want it to be. Like I said, they basically just got all these chips overclocked from um, from factory. It's all about hitting those benchmark numbers. That's what sells CPUs. So yeah. That's where we're at right now. It's not the not the age of overclocking. It's the it's the age of undervolting, <laughs> basically. Uh, they're all they're all freaking overclocked from factory, and so now now the skill is to you know go in there and tune your CPU to run on a lower wattage. I mean, people have been doing this shit in Southeast Asia for ages, where you know. As, people, you know, power bills are a bigger deal and stuff like that. Efficiency is more front of mind compared to in the West. So, I mean, it's not really a new thing, but... Once IQ is set up, um, we might sign off for the night. Because yeah, it's pretty boring from here because we just let it let it run and get a little bit warm and make sure everything's running all right before I ship it off. But yeah, if anyone's got any other final questions for me before I sign off, now is your chance to speak. If not, well, I'm going to say goodnight because I am starting to feel tired. Yes, looks the goods. There's plenty of RGB settings and stuff there in Gigabyte's new software, so you can have a bit of fun with that. No worries at all. No worries, man. Yeah, so yeah, have a good one. Um, I can't say when, when you'll see me again, but yeah when you when will you will i mean i'm not gonna i'm not gonna completely stop tim's pc just like i said at the start when when the advertising spend isn't 
isn't giving me like full time full time work. It's kind of like it's kind of a case of hmm maybe maybe we'll go with a different strategy for Tim's PC for for the time being because I'm not going to keep dumping thousands of dollars into advertising every month and not get a return on my investment because you got to consider like if I don't if I don't advertise at all all of my sales and jobs is like all um the 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 um the the net profit is is all it's all me i, I don't have to i don't have to freaking it's not like i've got a gross profit and i've got to take off all these business expenses beforehand no 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 every all of my labor is um is profit is net profit yeah i know i'll fix that up before i pack it up with foam and stuff And yeah, it says you should stick with it. This was when you advertising right now. Yeah, yeah, exact, exactly. So, at least for the time being, while the economy in Australia is the way that it is, probably not going to be doing too much advertising. I might do some ads, like, at certain times of the year, like, maybe around tax time. We'll, we'll, um, we'll do some advertising and, and stuff like that. But... Yeah, like I said, I'm not gonna keep, I'm gonna keep fucking paying Facebook and shit thousands of dollars every fucking month if they can't even connect me with customers that are gonna buy a PC. Yeah. So yeah, bit unfortunate, but I mean, there's not much, there's not much I can do. I'm doing a niche thing here. Awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah, really appreciate any of the word of mouth because, like I said, I'm not advertising, so, um, yeah, we won't be, everyone, everyone else will be seeing ads for, um, fucking Aftershock, Cataclysm, Lakes Custom PCs. Aftershock is owned by overseas people, too. Aftershock's owned by Singapore businessmen, but, yeah. Uh, that you'll, these are the ads that everyone will see. The average Australian who sees their stuff would not think that they're... No, they just think it's an Australian company. And it's, just, it's an Australian CEO, but that just being a CEO doesn't mean you own the company. No, you just it's, a publicly, it's a publicly traded company and half of the, half of the company's operation is over in Singapore. This is just their, their Australian venture. So... Yeah, don't don't support aftershock if you care about supporting Australian businesses. Um, yeah, I can definitely. I if if you're if you want to buy from an Australian business in your in your city, um, and you want to be doubly sure that they're definitely Australian and you're definitely helping um, Australian small businesses and not um, you know not foreign entities, just hit me up. I'm happy to I'm happy to tell you about all of the other PC places because you know some of them some of them might not be exactly what you think. Some of them are real sort of like mum and dad operations, sort of like what what, what you see here at Tim's PC. You know, it's it's one or or a couple of people, like maybe a couple of brothers or something like that that are that are running the businesses. Um, so there's plenty of stuff like that, you know, it might, they might, their, their marketing might seem like they're some PC company, but it's actually just a couple of, a couple of brothers and, and cousins doing the, doing the job, a real family thing. So, I mean, I can, I can always point you in the right direction, but obviously it come from me. I'm, I'm a, I'm an Australian citizen. I was born here, my parents are Australian citizens, their parents were Australian citizens, so we, we go we go back we go back a fair way. Um, <laughs> but so there's definitely no confusion about um, yeah whether I'm whether I'm Australian, whether Tim's PC is Australian, because Tim's PC is a sole trader business, GST registered, um, but yeah, essentially it's just me. Christine helps out, but she's not officially on the books as part of the business. 
Um, it's just the fact no, that we're we're, we're, like we're married, <laughs> we're married, we're married. So if I if I profit, there's kind of like a flow on effect for her. So she doesn't mind helping me out for free. <laughs> Slave labor, but, <laughs> but not really slave labor. So, voluntary slave labor. Voluntary <laughs> la slave labor, but then you get kickbacks at the end of the day, so so you can't really complain too much. No, anyway. no, no worries. All right, well, look, thanks everyone for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you all in the next video.